From Ogre to Kijin to Wicked Oni, Xion has undergone many significant transformations throughout the series. We've seen her go from a weak Oni with a club to a Wicked Oni powerful enough to bend the laws of the world to their will. Like Benimaru, Soei, and Kurobe, Xion's evolution path took a different turn. While they became Oni, Xion transformed into a Wicked Oni, a being not known for their kindness. Onis are the regular evolution route of a Kijin. It's said to be the result of a Kijin returning to the roots as an elemental, changing them into spiritual life forms similar to dryads or incarnated archdemons. Encountering an Oni is said to be the same as running into a natural disaster. They are believed to have control over both nature itself and natural disasters. In Japan, they're also seen as carriers of misfortune who slaughter people without discrimination, spreading destruction wherever they go. Being worshipped as local gods explaining why the crusaders from the western holy church were afraid when they noticed Xi'an was an Oni. An Oni's power far outscales that of a Kijin and they possess immense power similar to that of a demon lord. With all that power you could see what's so terrifying about them, but for Xi'an she didn't just become any Oni, she became its parallel a wicked Oni. What makes them wicked is due to them leaning closer to that of a demon rather than a pure elemental. Since she was leaning closer to the demon side, her essence wasn't pure enough for her to become a regular Oni like the others. An influence of this might have been due to the two greater demons Rimuru used to revive her and the rest of the dead in Tempest, or just the Harvest Festival in general since it was his evolution to a demon lord. The power from her evolution is the same as in Oni's, but being closer to a demon lord, she gained Ogre Berserker, Perfect Memory, and Ultra Speed Regeneration. If we look into after evolution to Kijin, then to Oni, she and the other ogres became more refined and human-like, still having some ogre features such as their horns. Before evolution, she appeared aggressive and wild, also having a tooth stuck out her mouth. Personality-wise, if you watch the show, you know Xion is a big crybaby if she doesn't get what she wants. Very clumsy and simple-minded. It's to the point where she calls someone named Razin, Ramen, and also if Rimuru doesn't take her with him or give her what she wants, she'll cause havoc. She takes pride in being Rimuru's number one secretary and also takes pride in all of Rimuru's accomplishments and actions, as if they were her own. In the newest episode, they showed the new version of her weapon, Gorokimaru version 2, which is a sword based on Hinata's dead end rainbow. This sword has the spirit eater effect that directly attacks the opponent's spiritual body. It was dubbed version 2 when it got upgraded, other than that one of the biggest changes to Xion was in her strength. She went from an ogre to a wicked oni. The gap between those two is the size of a canyon. An ogre is ranked at a B tier monster with some rarely reaching A rank. Out of all the monsters in the forest of Jura, they are one of the most powerful races you could spawn as. As for a wicked oni, she ranked at S rank being an actual calamity. It was stated by Raphael that there is a small chance that Xion could actually inflict damage on Rimuru with her master chef perfect outcome. This says a lot due to Rimuru having a skill called food chain which keeps all his allies from being harmful to him. This is not only by keeping a hierarchy of whenever they get stronger Rimuru also gets stronger but Raphael also integrates their skills into his defense so they can't harm him. As for what master chef does, it's a skill that has two sub skills. Certain Outcome, which is a heinous ability that directly alters the laws of the world, similar to an ultimate skill. It allows the user to freely change the result of an action or the state of an object into their desired outcome, no matter how improbable. It's possible to permanently alter the state of a living being or object, to make an unnatural state their natural state. A very simple way of explaining it is that you can permanently make a square into a circle if it was never a square in the first place. This ability makes any form of healing useless. The only way to counter this is to be able to manipulate the laws of the world such as via law manipulation or an ultimate skill and then manage to overcome the user's will with their own will. We saw this skill used against Razin, King Adamatis, and Rahim. I don't believe they showed this in the anime, but after the completion of the Harvest Festival, Rimuru and Xion went to go talk to the prisoners. She was tasked with getting information from them. They were willing to talk, but she could not forgive them for staining Rimuru's hands with human blood. With the use of her skills, she was able to completely sever their bodies while keeping them alive, turning them into literal blobs. 
It even made Diablo question how someone could bend the laws of the world to this extent. It's funny because she first showed this skill when she used it to make her horrible food taste good. The second sub skill is optimal action. It allows the user to determine the best course of action in any given situation by allowing them to see through the flow of their movements. It also enables the user to perfectly recreate anything they've done once. For instance, as long as they've scratched the enemy, they can make their attacks always deal damage. Or if they've defeated the enemy once, no matter how difficult, they can defeat the enemy again with ease. So this sub skill is very broken, but with the combination of these two sub skills, she can manifest her desired reality while maxing her chances of success in any given situation. She gained Master Chef because of the Harvest Festival, but this ability alone takes Xion into being one of the most broken characters in the show. Obviously, there are a lot of characters with stronger skills and are stronger in general, but imagine being able to bend the laws of the world as you see fit and get the perfect outcome you want every single time. A good example is when she broke the holy field and the barrier that the seven days put up that was extremely strong. Another skill in her arsenal is Divine Berserker which overlays the user's spiritual body with their material body, temporarily giving them the body of a fully awakened spiritual life form and granting them immense power. But it has drawbacks of costing large amounts of energy to keep active. She also has perfect memory which keeps a record of the user's memories in their astral body, making them immune to mind control. It also lets the user resurrect if they die. The skill was given to them so their resurrection would be a success. Due to her and the others in Tempest that died having this advantage, she formed the Yomigiri which is a military force built up of a hundred citizens who were killed during Falom's invasion. Due to being resurrected, they were all given perfect memory. This skill combined with self-regeneration made them practically unkillable. So even if they were killed, they could come right back to life with all their memories like nothing happened and continue fighting. Even though they were extremely weak, this combo allowed them to whittle down any strong foe they were fighting and they used this well against the Crusaders. But from her ultimate skills to changes to her character, Xion definitely stands out in the series. Let me know who your favorite character is down below, but if you made it this far, consider watching another. Like the video and also subscribe since I do try to post engaging content you guys will enjoy and you won't want to miss what comes out in the future.